Beth is uh, the world's first solar powered sort of light bulb. Um, it's a pending um, sort of acrylic housing which houses a cylindrical flexible solar panel. So it's almost like what you find in the back of a foam camera. You've got that flexible uh, material in the back of the foam and that's essentially what the solar panel is made of. What you're looking at here is just a prototype. So it's made of glass, it's very fragile. I'm not going to give it to you guys to handle. Uh, it can easily break. But the end product will be incredibly durable, both African type. You can throw that thing, can fall, it's completely waterproof. So as you can see, it's very crude, it's got electronics protruding. Put this in the sun for five to eight hours. It stores the energy up to 40 hours of light. There will be three settings, a high setting, a low setting, a uh, medium setting and a low setting. High will be 20 hours of light, medium will be 30 hours of light, low will be 40 hours of light. And uh, low is enough to kind of navigate around your bedroom to see where you're going, medium is enough for reading a book, and uh, high will be for intensive task work. If you want to power a whole room, um, we're talking about 120 lumens on the high setting. That's equivalent to 10 times the brightness of a paraffin lantern. So you're talking about 10 paraffin lanterns in a test tube. Very simply put, I've created it in the test tube. Why? Because I wanted to keep the cost down low. And to keep the cost down low, the manufacturing cost down low, why not use what's already available? Coke bottles you can get anywhere in the world. So you simply pop it into a Coke bottle, it's got other advantages, and then you screw the cap on, which is patented. It's a patented way to turn the light on. And you've got a lantern that um, if you put it into a shack, you want to come up a little closer, you can get an idea of the kind of the kind of uh, light you get if you want to just have a look at the spot the most flooring I've got here. But Am I not cheating with my lights? <laughs> anyway, just a little bit uneven in here. Just find a sweet spot. Yeah. So essentially that's how it works. It can work with water in there, you can put uh, some stones at the bottom to keep it down. Uh, the final product is going to have a movable tip. No. So you can move the lip left and right. So you can actually have a task light. So if you're studying here and you want to concentrate all the light there instead of um, an ambiance light pushing down, you can do so. Um, essentially what she got here is a bottle that floats. You can drop it, it's not going to break. So it's an extra barrier of protection. Um, and another major feature of using it in a bottle is that I could potentially partner up with a company like Coca-Cola distribution, because obviously we have to think about the distribution. And actually my inspiration came from, putting it in a Coke bottle came from the, the challenge of the distribution, because how do we get it to the end users? Mm. Everyone, there's, there's lots of competitors out there, they're all trying to do the same thing, they're expecting a different result. But it's not going to work. You've got to do something different. And there's only one way to get the product to the masses, and that's through a corporate like Coca-Cola or Pepsi. If you go to the grassroots level and you're trying to keep, uh, make entrepreneurs on the ground, you can still do that. You can incorporate that into your business model. But it will take many, many, many years to reach 600 million people in Africa, if not. So you have to find a way to get it to the mass market as quickly as possible, the biggest volume possible. And that's only one way. To, you can find Coke anywhere in Africa. But you won't find solar power anywhere in Africa. You can find anywhere in Africa, but you won't find a solar power anywhere in Africa. And something like this costs about three dollars to manufacture, two to three dollars on a hundred thousand, you can make hundred thousand, which is a small amount. And um, we expect to sell them for around eight to ten dollars. The reason being that price, not cheaper, we don't want people to confuse them with Chinese knockoffs. In Africa it's a very, the people know about the Chinese knockoffs and it actually put a little distrust into the products. As soon as your price is too low, they immediately think Chinese product you can buy. You've got to actually know what they're willing to spend and give it up to them at the right price. So it's the right product at the right price for the right market at the right time. This product can change the way Africa receives light. And, uh, who knows, it could change the world for the next generation. Lighty. Thank you.